Well, here in Michigan, we have a couple of high profile sites, uh, a couple of military bases and a, a manufacturer that have had some clear releases of PFAS and they've impacted people's drinking water. So that's really caught a lot of attention here in Michigan where just a few years ago we had a big issue with drinking water with lead in Flint and I think that's kind of carried over and people's consciousness around it. So our current administration in Michigan is very sensitive to the issue and is trying to get out in front of it. So they're, they've established a uh, science advisory committee to advise the governor on these issues and they've been out testing water supplies and also testing wastewater which then ends up in surface water and so they've been trying to find out uh, which uh, businesses in the state and which uh, entities in the state are using PFAS and potentially putting them into the environment. I'll answer that kind of. Um, the US EPA issued a lifetime health advisory back in 2016 of 70 parts per trillion and that applies to the combination of PFOA and PFOS. Now, unfortunately, that's not an enforceable level. It's only an advisory level at this point. Um, the US EPA has not established an MCL under the Safe Drinking Water Act, and that would typically be how they would set an enforceable level for a chemical. Well, the human health concerns are still being figured out. Um, the toxicology related to PFAS is still kind of in its infancy right now and we don't know exactly what effects they have and at what levels. Some of the things that are suspected are developmental effects, immune system effects, and uh, potentially even cancer. But the, the exact level at which those things happen um, is still not confirmed. The other thing that they're still looking into is what are the synergistic effects of multiple PFAS chemicals on a person? Most times, uh, if they're exposed to PFAS, it's not just one of the chemicals. Remember, there's 3,000 of these chemicals, and usually there's more than one of those that's present, and what we don't know very much at all is how those interact and what, what kind of effects when you have multiple PFAS chemicals that a person may be in their drinking water. Many states are, um, particularly those that have known problems, uh, are establishing their own criteria independent of any federal action. So some of the, the states, have, like Michigan, have adopted the EPA health advisory level as their groundwater cleanup criteria. Some other states are higher, and there's some other states that are going lower, such as New Jersey and Vermont and Minnesota, have criteria that are quite a bit lower than the US EPA health advisory.